No. Yes. Yes, me too. <laughs> right. Hello, hello everyone. And welcome along to our regular Sunday afternoon live stream. Uh, I realise that today is Father's Day. I'm not sure if it's on both sides of the Atlantic or just here. Um, and so I realise that today is quite a tough day for some people. And for others that still have your dads around, spoil them. Because I tell you, you miss them when they're not here. Um, anyway, I hope that some of you are off doing that and having a lovely time. So maybe we won't get quite as few people join us as normal. Maybe we will. Who knows? Right. Oh, loads of things have been going on here. Loads. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Where shall I begin? Yeah, I'll start with what I was doing yesterday. And I think, I, well, I know I showed you on the group what I was doing. I was making these. <laughs> I don't even know what started me off making them, really. I was just... I was, I just had time. For once, I had time to do something that I really wanted to do. I wasn't against a deadline or anything. So I just thought, well, I'll get my paints out. That's usually what I like to do when I've got time. So I did. And this is what I made. Um, most of them, apart from the envelope, are... Um, watercolour exclusively a watercolour well with a bit of blank black ink around them uh this one i just did my usual put the ink on the mat and dabbed it in um and i quite like that actually i quite like the way that's turned out i like the little curly bits on the ends of the uh, grass <laughs> um and the text stamp that i use Anne was asking which text stamp it is it's a stamp as anonymous stamp it's called the Studio 490, Studio 490 by Stampers Anonymous, and it looks like it's a Wendy Vecchi one. Um, but if you go and have a look at Stampers Anonymous, that's that's it, and it measures, I don't know what it measures, 5x5, five five, something like that. 5 by almost 5. So that's that, Anne, that's the uh, text stamp that I was using. Um, what else can I tell you about that? Nothing much, really. Um, these two are my favourites. This one ended up with a dab of blue in the middle. I have no idea how that happened, but it doesn't really spoil it, I don't think. I like the background, um, which I painted in first before these. Uh, these are on handmade paper and they will need to be backed onto something because they're a bit uh, feeble. Um, anyway, that was that. And once I'd got them all done and laid out on my desk, I thought, you know what? I need to do a journal. I need to do a journal that's got hand-painted and hand-coloured stuff in it. And it needs to be flowers, because that's the language I speak. I speak flower. <laughs> I don't know why they... I just love flowers. I, I, I always have, always... And I'm pretty sure I always will. The other thing that I want to say at this moment is... Is Judy on? Yes. Yes. I need to say a huge thank you to Judy uh, for her support to the channel via the Buy Me A Coffee site. Without the support that we get from that and the direct um, donations that we receive... We couldn't keep going because we couldn't afford to buy the stuff that we need to, to do this. So thank you very, very much, Judy. It's greatly appreciated. And I'm sure everybody on the group appreciates your, your help because we can keep going. So thank you. And another huge thank you goes out to... Look at this. I'm sure some of you know what this is. Look, it says the Paper Shed UK. So it's from our lovely Kay Fisher. Is Kay on? She is, yes. She is. Oh. She's as Paper Shed UK. As Paper Shed UK. Okay, well, this, these arrived to me during the week. Oh, my goodness. This was, like, another reason why I thought I've got to do a journal. Look at I don't. It's in cellophane. I don't want to take it out, but it's just a gorgeous tassel. Look at that. Look at all this. Oh, it's beautiful. And in the same box as that, 
with these. Look at these. They're so, so pretty. That is just the nicest bead I've ever seen. It's got flowers on it. It's gorgeous. Can you see that one there? It's got flowers on it. it they are sensational. I absolutely, absolutely love them. They're so pretty. So um, that was, they, they came nicely wrapped up. I've just wrecked the packaging. Um, and this one. Look. Oh, gorgeousness. Just pure gorgeousness. There's two here uh, on one bulb pin. I might split them actually. Two's too much for one page. <laughs> um, and this one here on a, a gold bulb pin. Look at that. Look at this bead. It's poppies. You see that? It's like crystal but with poppies in it. They are so gorgeous and wouldn't they look fabulous in a botanical type um, journal. It's ages since I made a journal. So between what I did yesterday and Kay sending me these fabulous goodies, a journal is now imminent. Hang on to your heart. So long since I made one. I don't even know if I can remember how you make one. But anyway, so thank you so much, Kay. Should you wish to uh, have any like this made for you, <laughs> oh, I've just noticed that bead, it's beautiful as well. Uh, then she is the Paper Shed UK on Etsy. Find her on Instagram, um, all over the place, Facebook, but Etsy is where you need to go. She does ship internationally. I know that quite a few of you in the US have got some of these that Kay's made. I think her shipping is as reasonable as it possibly can be. Um, the Paper Shed UK, journal goodies and pretty accessories. Yeah, she's right there. So thank you so much, Kay. She's actually now got a YouTube channel. I think she's had it for a little while, but she's been a bit skeptical about speaking on it. Um, I can understand that. It's a bit nerve wracking, but you know, it is a video. So if you really make a huge mistake, just get rid of the <laughs> rid of the recording this doing live streams this is flying by the seat of your pants because if something goes wrong <laughs> it just goes wrong and as you know with me uh, many times things go wrong but that's just the way it is isn't it it is so should you wish to have any of these paper shed uk and it's Kay fisher she's got a youtube channel which she is at least one video now she's speaking on you right? Call. Yeah, roll call. Let's have a roll call. Uh, special welcome to Kathy Corf. Hello, Kathy. For the first time. Hello, Kathy. Very welcome. Jen. Hello, Jen. Mike. Hiya, Mike. Judy, you'd like to know about the ring. Ah, oh, the ring. Mr. F bought me this ring ages ago. Ages ago. And I absolutely loved it. I'd asked Santa for one several times, but he's obviously deaf. Um, and then this came just for no reason whatsoever. It just arrived and I really, really love it, but it didn't fit. And I could have gone to have it resized, but I was ever hopeful I'd lose some weight, <laughs> as you are. And um, I just, I was looking for some earrings today, actually. I was looking through the drawer and I came across this and I thought, ooh, there's that beautiful ring. Let's just try it on. Well, I tried it on this finger, didn't fit. So I took my um, eternity ring off and put it on there because there's a groove where my eternity ring goes. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And so I got it on and it's now sitting in the groove where my eternity ring sits and I can't get it off. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the story of the ring. It's it's really pretty. I, I absolutely love it. But it's a good job because I think I'm going to be wearing it for a while. I have actually lost some weight. I've, I've lost... I don't know, what, um, 12, 13 pounds, something like that. So uh, if I keep losing weight, maybe one day it'll drop off. Who knows? Janya. Hi, you lovely Janya. Laurie. Hello, Laurie. Kim. Hi, Kim. Laura B. Hello, Laura. Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Misty. Hello, Misty. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Louise. Hello, Louise. Pam. Hi, Pam. 
Katie Fisher. Hello, lovely Kay. Connie. Hi, Connie. Joan. Hello, Joan. Uh, Karen. Hi, Karen. I think that's it. Well, that's a good turnout for today, I think. Well done, and thank you very much to everybody who's joining us. I hope that you um, have a good time chatting to each other and occasionally perhaps listening to what I've got to say. I don't know if I've got a lot worth listening to today. Anyway, right, the prompt... Same old, same old. Same old, same old. Really, it is. Uh, the prompt for this week's tag prompt is... Lilies by Fancy Nancy. <laughs> Ross isn't on then. Is it Father's Day in the US or Canada? Does anybody know? It is, I believe. It is. Oh, well, maybe somebody's taking Ros and Jim out for... There's only one Ellen Lilies. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let it pass. That's why I was kind of not showing it, <laughs> but then I had to. I know, it's a, sp it's a typo. <laughs> um, but it is by Fancy Nancy, and I've spelt that correctly. <laughs> So anyway, you've all been posting wonderful things on the group um, and now it's my turn. <laughs> well, we were having a look before. We're looking around the house frantically trying to find a picture that I painted oh, oh, ages ago. Yeah, put the picture up just briefly. Um, that's the picture that I painted. It's some while ago now, but we came across it the other day and now... Well, I'll be damned if we can find it. Um, but anyway, we're going to put a video out later this evening uh, or this afternoon or whatever your time uh, on me actually painting that live. It's probably not the most enthralling video ever, but um, it's there. If you want to put it on double speed or whatever and watch it, that's probably a good thing to do, I would have thought. Anyway, whilst we were looking, get back to the subject in hand. Uh, I came across these two mixed media pads that I bought, I think at the turn of the year from Hobbycraft when they were having a sale. And one is blue, blue mixed media paper. Who ever thought such a thing? And this one is grey green. Don't say it's just green. It's grey green. And it's fabulous, isn't it? I love that. So I was thinking about my lily and thinking, should I do it on one of these? And I decided, yes, I'll have a little practice first. So I've practiced on the green one. Pop that there. I like the fact that these are A5. They measure uh, 5.8 by 8.3 inches. And they're 250 GSM or 115 pounds. Look at this. I've got all the information to hand that I need. Fabulous. And they're by a company called Clairefontaine, who make great paper, good pastel paper. Right, so this is what I did. <laughs> I've gone lily mad. These ones I did on the ordinary white mixed media paper. I've used colouring pencils. Um, I'm almost ashamed to show you these in case Matty sees it. Because Matty is the colourist in our group. She is fabulous with um, coloured pencils. She really is. So those were my two sort of practice ones that I, I drew myself and... Well, they're okay, they're all right, ish. And then I thought I'd try on here. Now it has definitely subdued the color, but I like it. And then I practice my writing. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit shonky, but I was just practicing really. So anyway, those are my lilies. I'd like to say those are my lilies. I've done the tag, now let's move on. But I'll not, I'll bore you to tears with how I did it. Right, um, I don't really want to put anything more on that, so I think I might try the blue this time, just just for a laugh. Um, yes. Now, as I say, these two I drew myself. Just freehand. Lorna yep. says hi. Hello, lovely Lorna. How are you doing today? Carolyn Baker. Hello, Carolyn. Hi. I don't recognise that name. If you knew... Huge welcome. Um, I don't know what I was... Yeah, these two I drew myself. That one I copied from uh, an image somewhere online. I was put in Google 
uh, lily image and this popped up. Now round by us in the he local hedgerows, we have these growing. They're not prolific, but they're, they're there. Uh, and I know them as day lilies because they only last a day each bloom. But there are so many in one sort of clump of them that it seems like they're, they're going forever. But each one, apparently, I've never watched it happen, so I might be wrong, but each one apparently lasts a day. And I think you can get them in different colours, but round here they're all orange. Caroline is new. Oh, well, huge welcome, Caroline. Um, so what I want, what I want to do, I'm going to do it this way this time. Um, I quite like the size of this, and I've measured it. So, I, I mean, I rescaled it after I um, got the image, and it's about it's just less than three inches across. Because I was thinking that might be quite nice for a tag, for a journal. Thinking journals, guys. We're thinking journals. Right, so I've got this um, paper that I showed you last week, which uh, is the Saral. Saral copy paper. And I'll put that somewhere like central. Does that look central-ish? That'll do. Uh, and I'm just going to get my pencil trace around this and it should leave me a nice image to... Uh, colour. See, as soon as I start to concentrate, I can't speak. So all of you now are saying, concentrate, concentrate, stop speaking. So I'm just doing the the outlines, it's all that's needed. It's a really simple shape, actually. I feel a bit bad that I haven't, I'm not using one I've drawn, but, you know. I don't want to look a complete Charlie. <gasps> That's the thing. Yeah, there we are. Look, it's five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tell a lie. Six very straightforward, simple petals. It's nearly in the middle. That's near enough. Right, so I have, uh, I'm using the same crayons as I used last week. Different colours, obviously. <laughs> Um, and they are my uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. They are a bit spendy, these. Um, and to be honest, any any colouring pencils will do. Any. Uh, right, so I'm going to start with the yellow. And that's kind of down in the middle here. And where the light would hit it. So you've got to decide where you think the light's going to hit it. So I think it's going to hit that there. And once you've decided, you've kind of got to stick to it. I think it might be hitting there. Lisa Kelly says hello from Arizona. Oh, hello, Lisa Kelly. I believe it's quite warm in Arizona this time of year. I have never been. There's too many snakes for my liking. Maybe you don't encounter them, I don't know. But in my head, you're encountering them all the time. <laughs> um, and this one at the back maybe doesn't have too much. So I'll just give it a little bit there. Okay, so that's that. Then the next thing I want to do is go from the light to the very dark. This is my darkest orange that I will be using. In fact, it's almost a red. It's called Middle Cadmium Red. So, yeah, it's a red. And where the petal is lying behind another petal, you get a little shadow. The front petal casts a shadow onto the back one and pushes it back. So, we're just going to go around here and put in those little shadows and give us a bit of dimension. Now this one here is lying behind both of these. So I'll try not to take up too much time doing this because I appreciate it's probably not what you've tuned in to see. This one here is behind this one and this one. So it needs the same down each side. It needs the dark. The, the reason that I'm using colored pencils not watercolour uh, paint or anything that I usually use, is because in my new journal, <laughs> I 
the one I haven't even made yet. Um, I want to incorporate some book pages, some old book pages. Now, painting with watercolours on old book pages can be quite trepidatious. Sometimes it can work, sometimes it just doesn't. Um, whereas coloured pencils, they're not a wet medium, so you can always use them. So I just want to practice. I'm practising my coloured pencilling. And Laura B says she doesn't get the whole decide where the light is thing. Well, the best thing to do is, in the dark, take yourself to a mirror with a torch or a flashlight. Hold it under your chin and you will see that various bits of your face light up. That's because the light is directional. It's not lighting your whole face up. It would if it was head on. If you put it above your head, you'll get different highlights. Probably highlight your brow, your nose, your chin, the bits that stick out. And that's, that's the best thing I can tell you to visualise where light comes from. So bits of the lily that are hidden will be dark. Bits that are quite forward facing, they'll be light. You could do it yourself with a flower. Get a flower and hold a light under it and you'll see. Have you got a better way of explaining it, Mr. F? Mm, no, just assume that light's coming from one direction. Yeah. And any eye points will be light and anything that would be in the shadow is dark. Yeah. Particularly important with landscapes. Yeah. Yeah, you get away with this, really. With nothing. So I'm not pressing on with this, because this... With, with uh, coloured pencils, once you press on, you've kind of sealed it there. <coughs> Excuse me. And you've almost stopped the paper accepting any more colour, because you've flattened the paper. And it's just it just doesn't have room to accept any more. So that's kind of that. Sometimes it helps if you just draw yourself an arrow at the top. So here, with these bits being light, the light would be coming from about there. And all the bits that are facing it and raised will be light. Anyway. That's that. Uh, so that's my darker one. Now I'm going to go in with quite a light orange. And I'm going to go over the whole thing. If you're used to alcohol markers, this is kind of what you do with alcohol markers to blend them. So I'm going over everywhere, but I'm not really... I'm not burnishing it into the paper. I'm just going over it. Just to sort of consolidate what we've got I suppose so yeah that's the reason that I wanted to use um, colored pencils and always color the way that you know you wouldn't color this that way you sort of color it with the I don't know the growth of the petal I don't know the way the petal lies that's the way you want to color it so all the colours that we've already put in, we're going over. And Mike and Janet you say you're an excellent teacher and an awesome teacher. <laughs> don't know about that. I bet you Laura's still going. I don't know what she's doing. No, she says, thank you. Finally, somebody put it in a way I can understand it. Oh, that's great. Could you zoom in a little bit, do you think, Mr. F? Because uh, it's kind of hard for them to see. I could endeavour to. And you sort of need to see this. Is that better? That's marvellous, thank you. I'm going to wander <coughs> off like you do. <coughs> I'll try not to wander off like I do. So all the colours that I've already put in, I'm going to go over them with this light orange colour. Everywhere, the whole petal. And where there's yellow underneath, it'll take on a different look to where there's no colour beneath or where that dark is. Fancy Nancy's joined us. Fancy Nancy, it was your prompt that we're doing today. Lilies. And Carolyn would like to know why you chose grey for the background paper. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, 
these ones I did in with white background paper and you see they're much much brighter than this one this one I did on this green pad also much brighter <laughs> but the reason that I chose those was because I'd forgotten I'd bought them and when I found them I got quite excited and thought oh I must use them that is the only reason there is no other reason at all And I must admit, I quite like them. They're different. It does change the colour value. Yeah, there, it does. It? it does quite a lot. So over the whole leaf, but don't press on. Because this is now a final layer. And like I say, if you press on, you fill up all the paper. And then it won't accept any more, any more colour. So you're banjaxed if you want to add anything more. Colouring to me always seems like it would be a nice first step for somebody. You know, painting, you're committed, aren't you? You've got to buy brushes, you've got to buy watercolours. Holding a brush in your hand seems a bit alien uh, if you're not used to it. But coloured pencils, they're just pencils. We've all used pencils. So, yeah, I think that... Johnny says they make a nice bouquet with the different shades. It's true, actually, Johnny. I hadn't realised un until I put them together earlier there just how different they are. Right, so that's that. So let's have another look now where we need... Um, I'm just going to blow my nose. Can you knock my head off, please? Knock your head off? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> your pleasure. Hey, you oh well, never mind. <laughs> I'm sure everybody knows what it sounds like to blow your nose. Right, okay, I'm back. Right, so now I'm going to take this mid-red colour called pomp, pomp, Pompeian red. I don't know what that means, but never mind. And I'm going to just pick out some bits that I think would look not the very bright bits because they're yellow. But just maybe going up towards the the tips there. Once again, I'm going over that dark colour. Over the dark colour and just down the petal a little bit. Just add a bit of interest to it. And I'm going to work my way around all the petals and do that. The one says, translate, Mr. F, banjacked. Oh, banjaxed. <laughs> Knackered. There's <laughs> <laughs> another word for that. So going over everything, we're just adding more depth, more colour, more layers. Nancy said yesterday, Will panicked and said, aren't you supposed to be watching Fiona? I, do, I reminded him it was Saturday. Oh, poor Will. <laughs> Today, if he gets to remind me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yesterday was Timmy Day. It was a new distress colour day. Oops. Um, and we'd had a little... Well, it wasn't a bet because there was no wager involved. But uh, Mr F thought that it was going to be a sort of burnt orange. Uh, and I thought it was going to be a light blue. And it turned out actually neither of us were right because it was um it's called what's it called uncharted mariner uncharted mariner yeah and if i'm honest with you i think it's a color we didn't need i, I do i honestly do it's not like me to badmouth timmy um but i don't think it's a color we were desperate to have right so that's that mid red put in now now i'm going to go back to the yellow and just highlight some of these again but with a bit more purpose this time just make it go round follow the shape of the petal this one won't be very light because it's behind these two but you can still add a little bit to it 
This it says Uncharted Money Maker Blue. Yeah, that not that the case? I mean, I think, you know, it's all very well bringing the inks and everything out, you know, the whole nine yards. But those pins that he brings out, they just say to me, M I, I want to make money. I mean, maybe it's not Tim's idea, I don't know, but he certainly says, you know, goes on about how much he likes them, etc. It's, I don't know. I don't know. Don't want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> so I'm good enough at that as it is. Right, so there we go. I've highlighted the bits that I wanted to highlight. There's not much in there that needs highlighting. Right, so there we are. Now what I need to do is get my big serious orange out. <laughs> and you can see there's quite a difference between the, the colours there. This is the light one we've used up until now. And then this is a real orange and it's called Dark Cadmium Orange. So let me pop those over there. So now I am going to colour with Ernest. Hello Ernest. Um and really burnish it down, go over everywhere and burnish, burnish. And by burnishing, I mean press as hard as you can, leave as much pigment as you can. And these uh, crayons, polychromos and this, these ones, um, they have a lot of wax in them. So when you press down, you sort of get this lovely waxy look to it. But you're still following the lines. You're wandering off again. Am I? Oh, sorry, guys. You're still following the lines of the petal. Okay. But burnishing down. Like so. I mean, I must say, I must uh, tell you about this. Um, I was, I watch Artie Mays, I mean, religiously, really. I think she's a fabulous artist and a couple of weeks ago maybe one of her try it tuesdays she was doing pa <clears throat> painted backgrounds and stamping on them she said oh you know she'd got her inspiration from uh, a paid uh, channel channel yes channel called the creative cove and so and she she was imploring us to go over and have a look and see what this lady at the creative Cro cove did so that's what i did i went and had a look and the lady's called michelle and boy is she a talented lady i mean she makes everything look so darn easy it's just sad <laughs> um but she's nice you know so um I, i've watched quite a few of her videos and uh, one of hers was actually colouring an orange lily, which was jolly useful for today. So I watched it and I watched it and I watched it, but you know, I'm never going to be as good as she is. Let me move that down and then you won't keep wandering off so much. Okay. It's hard to do it at arm's length. Many things are. Um, Exactly. So yeah, if you uh, like the artier side of journals, then uh, go and have a look at Michelle's work and the way that she teaches, because it's, it's not teachy. It's just lovely. And you see her sketch things out and you think, well, oh, surely I could do that. She can do it. I could do it. But I don't know. She's just better. Right, so there we are. We've got all all our different. Um, you know, it's not actually picking up the yellow very well there, but there is yellow in it. I can tell you. See, it doesn't really want to accept any more now, because I've filled up that paper. So, you know, whatever I've got now is pretty much whatever I've got. So let's draw a stem on it. Mm -hmm. If you come out a little bit, because it's quite fuzzy that now, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's great. You can see that there are different areas within that. The fact that I'm doing it on blue has deadened it quite a lot, actually, but that's just the way it is. So from the centre, let's draw our stem. 
down there and I'm just making a straightforward stem nothing fancy um, and I'm going to start with the light green on this side because this is where the light's coming from then I'm going to go straight into my dark darkest green and there will be a little bit of a shadow under that front petal because of the source of the light like that so we've got the the dark green on one side the light green on the other and then I'm going to go with my medium uh, green which is called permanent green <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm going to go over the whole lot, same as we did with the with the lily, over the light and over the dark. It brings it all together, but you can still see there's a light and a dark. There we are. Might need a bit more dark in there. Definitely need some under there because that is where there would be a shadow. And just down there. Like that, that's great. Right, okay. Now the thing that's missing is all the stamens and the anther or whatever you call it. So um, this is what I'm going to use. <laughs> it's really highfalutin. Um, I don't even know what make it is. And it's simply called roller tip pen. And it's really served me well, actually. It's pretty much empty now, which I'm a bit sad about because I don't even know how to replace it. I have got uh, other fine liners. This one just seems to want to go over everything. So let's see where I put my stamens the last time. Um, where's the green one? Because that's the same. All right, just generally around the place. So they seem to come out from here. And the first thing is that big anther thing. So it's just kind of knobbly on the end, isn't it? Um, and then we just have these little doobries. Kathy says, this is amazing to watch. Thank you, you Kathy. Oh. Oh. So let's just put a couple in the back there. Move around to here. If you're afraid of going in with a, a this fine liner because you can't get it off once it's on it's on um, do it in pencil first that's okay let's make some other little lines and marks and dots and dashes around the place Just like that. Okay, right. So now I'm going to go around the outside and put in <coughs> any lines that I want to exaggerate. So I want to exaggerate this here because it's the centre. And then we'll just go around the outside. I do try and not make um, an exact line. <coughs> Sorry about this, guys. I need my rum and coke. Excuse me a moment. Cheers. For those of you who are new to the group or anybody that's just happened across this, that's a rum and coke like no other because there's no rum in it. <laughs> uh, and actually, furthermore, it's not even coke, is it, Mr. F? It's cheap jack would be pretend coke but you know there you go it wets your whistle so yeah what I was trying to say was don't don't be too exact going around these um, they, don't, they won't look right if, if you do because nature's just not exact so I'm just sort of going around the edges ish and that just I think just brings it to life so now let's put the lines in that there would be. So they're central lines. Carolyn says it's relaxing to watch 
And Sharon says that's brought the flower to life. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It really does. It looks kind of dead before that. And Mike said, oh, well, rum and coke. And Jen said, it's really rum. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, I promise you it's not. Miss Dior says there's no rum, but we all know better. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know what sort of reputation I've got, I'm sure. But never mind, eh? So I'm just exaggerating the the um, tips. Tips is the word I'm looking for, not tipsy. <laughs> or tipsy. And this one. So we're nearly there. You've done well to stay throughout. So yeah, there we are. Right, so just down the uh, outside of the stem. Once again, don't try and get it too straight. Uh, you'll only you you'll only not get it straight. Then you'll be cross with yourself. Whereas it looks better if it's not straight in the first place. So I think that's about it. I think that's the most the best I can do with that. So that's the one on green. This is the one on blue. It has a kind of deader look to it, but I don't think that's necessarily bad. It's just different. And these are the ones that I did on white using exactly the same colours. There we go. So you have to work out where it's going and what um, what kind of finish you want. If I'm making a journal that is kind of tea stained and um, vintage looking, these probably aren't what you want in it. You know, you're going through looking at nice pictures like Edith pictures, for example. Then you come across these. I mean, you could burn your retinas out. So um, maybe one of these would be nice. So Janice is just kidding about the rum and coke. <laughs> Miss P always says there's no rum, but we know better. Yes, Mike. <laughs> Mesmerizing. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, the black lines make a huge difference. So, you know, I implore you to just do it. <laughs> just do it. It will be fine. Um, yeah, it's a nice garden, isn't it? Um, I think, actually, I will go around that once again with my black pen just to try and bring it to life a little bit more. And I'm going to be even more wobbly this time. More wobbly because I like the wobbles. And it looks like you've sketched it, doesn't it? Where well, we all know that I cheated and I just copied it. <laughs> well, I, don't, I wouldn't say cheat. Cheat's wrong. I didn't cheat. I used tools that are available to me. <laughs> and there's nothing stopping any of you guys using tools that are available to you. Yeah. Have I done that one? I think so. Yeah, there we go. That's him. Right, so there we have it. Uh, on the green one, I plucked up the courage to actually write Daylily. It's not great, is it? But my handwriting's really rubbish. So, yeah, I I'm not going to do that on there. <laughs> I need even more rum and coke for that one. Or a leaf. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this one, as you can see, I put a leaf on. Um, which is straightforward. You all you could do that I'm sure right that's the that's the tag it just needs cutting out and it's it's a tag it's a tag so I'm not going to cut it out yet because I'm not sure about the journal and where it's going to go and if it's going to go or anything like that so that's the lily section of the live stream over maybe it's a good time to go and get yourself a cup of coffee or I would like a cup of coffee, actually. Yeah, that would be nice. So, yeah, uh, colouring on book pages. That's going to be a thing in this journal. As well as uh, water, watercolour, all sorts of things. I really want to just not do the same old journals that I've always done that have been extremely precise. Can you um, pull me out again, please? Let me get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. I didn't need it anyway. <laughs> right. 
Oh, look at that. There's my camera. Um, so this morning, Mr. F has um, tea dyed me. What? Oh, are you? Simple things, as they say. Simple things, please. Simple minds. So I just want to show you really what I've put together. It doesn't mean that it's the final cut or that I'm not going to include other things or take some of this stuff out or whatever. But yesterday evening, I uh, messaged my good friend Lorna at TaylorMade Journals and said to her, Lorna, I have the desire to make a botanical journal. Which of your kits do you recommend? <laughs> she said, no way, lady. No, I'm not making that decision for you. Tell me what you want. So I looked through them all in depth. Again, I'm always looking at them. And I decided the one that I liked best was the one I've used previously among the wildflowers. It's a gorgeous kit. I think that might be the last journal, you know, proper honest to goodness journal that I ever made. Um, and the papers are beautiful. That's an example there. Now this is, I haven't printed this onto the 120 um, matte paper that I normally use. This is straight up copy paper. It's cream, but it's just copy paper. And look at the image that you get. It's the gorgeous images. Really, really good. So bearing in mind that I've got all this paper to either back tags or um, do what I want with, really. Um, thank you very much, Mr. F. That's great. So... I've been through my books, which, as you know, are legion. And uh, this is kind of what I've, well, I've kind of come up with three signatures. <laughs> They're looking a little bit um, wild at the moment. Yes, they are. Um, I, I've used some papers out of a book called, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. But it's really interesting it's really really interesting this picture here it says this jolly fish was drawn and given to us by a little girl whose dad works in andy's studio in banbury <laughs> really uh, and here secondhand bicycle bureau we still require more information concerning shops and other sources where secondhand bikes can be bought at reasonable prices see our last issue for the first batch of addresses but be quick as there aren't many copies left more info to come in future editions this here is all about spinning um tying your skeins etc etc uh, it's just it's a fabulous fabulous book is it called bizarre gardens or something and then what did you do with the books um i gave them to you I don't know where it went, that one. I might put it back on the shelf. Oh, yeah, you could have done. But it's a fabulous little book. Um, and, you know, when you're reading a journal, it's quite nice, looking through a journal, it's quite nice sometimes to come across things that you can actually read and bring a smile to your face. So this is kind of what I've got so far in the signature. You will appreciate it needs a wee bit of cutting down. I have got that page I haven't printed on the backs of any of these because I've designs to ideas to do things then that one they're all gorgeous that look at that isn't that a beautiful spread I'd be loath to split that spread um, and that right and these are the things doesn't matter these are the thing it came from that pile there but I'm not seeing it oh there it is yeah this is the book the complete country bazaar. <laughs> it's just it's just full of funny things. Weirdness. Yeah. For example, do you know what a blunger is? Do you know what a blunger is? It's a rotary paddle driven by a half horse. You're just motor. reading it. Driven slowly by a half horsepower motor mounted on the lid of a large water butt. <laughs> Does your clay puddling for you? I mean, there you go. There's an answer to that question you've always wanted to know. Oh, it's about starting a pottery look. But see the little pictures? They're nice, aren't they? No tiggers left for your tank. Mm. I, I really... Look at this. This is 
um, book reviews, reviews. Um, it's, ju it's, it's just great. I don't know where on earth Mr. F found this, but I really love it. See the stars in spring when you look up. See what you can see. Look at that. A very m miserable looking bunny rabbit, I must say. Wares and whatnots. I, I love this book. It's just different. Some Secrets of Rom Romany Long Life and Health. Mm. Thanks, Mr. F. So, yeah, that book will be playing a part in it. I also had this book that's this side. Well, it was just a tiny bit taller, actually, but I've chopped it down. But you see, on this side, there's a beautiful image. And on this side, well, it has got this little hairbell at the bottom, but this looks to me like it's begging to be... Because it'll go in the signature, so you won't see that bit. It'll go there. So that looks to me like it's begging to be uh, coloured on, I would say. So... Yeah, we've got that. Let's just put that there. Then I've got some um, newsprint paper. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get on with this. Uh, newsprint paper is, as it would suggest, very, very thin. Uh, I didn't ask Mr. F to um, coffee stain it because I thought it wouldn't stand it. I thought it would just go into pulp because it's quite loosely made, if you know what I mean. So... I've got that anyway, we'll see. I just fancy, take a fancy to splattering ink on it. See where we go. M might be rubbish. Here's another page from uh, that same book. I mean, look at it, it's gorgeous. That's really pretty. But, you know, like I say, this begging to be decorated up. Uh, oh yeah, this. This is out of a butterfly book. Look at that. How pretty is that, really? Pretty damn pretty. That's how much. So that's a nice spread. I mean, that would make a lovely centre spread, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, the book only had one of these, so um, I only have one. Uh, an envelope. Now, this is Cardi paper. I think I might have put it away, actually. Um, K-H-A-D-I. But it's ju that's just... Um... Mike's got to go and get some food for Jen. Oh. They're having a grill out later. <laughs> See you, Mike. <laughs> Enjoy your grill out. Ooh, sounds lovely. It's because it's Father's Day, do you think? Do you think? Father's Day? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, any excuse for Jen to get a drink in her hand. <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, handmade rag paper, is what this is. And it's an envelope, as you can see. This is a page, another page out of that uh, country bazaar. I mean, here we seem to... I, I couldn't even begin to tell you what that is. It's totally bizarre. Um, but look at that mushroom. Or toadstool or whatever it is. I mean, it's just fabulous, isn't it? There's the other part of the spinning page. Then there's adverts on the back. What's that spider about? Please remember to buy Saul magazine from Tony and Polly at Nine Broom Grove, Vi Vivenhoe, Colchester. I'm very interested to get in touch with people who would be willing to come and share a large sunny cottage in South Wales who would enjoy living together communally. Mm. Enough said. Uh, then we've got these, and I know they're not strictly speaking botanical. Well, they're not botanical, but they're they're quite nice. And once again, we've got the back pages here to put something on if we want to. It's good they ran my advert. <laughs> uh, then we've got this another toadstooly mushroom page. It's just nice to include, I think. Then this this came out of a book called. The uh, the Wine Cellar Guide, yeah. And so this is su suggested serving temperatures for a range of wine. Now, Jen, I know this would be very interesting for you. And I'm hoping that you already know this. Because really, you wouldn't want to be serving your wines at the wrong temperature, would you? But looking at it briefly, I will say that your dessert wines need to be the coolest. Your red wines 
need to be the warmest. 18 degrees C. I mean, <laughs> that's quite warm, isn't it? Uh, it's got that down as room temperature, 18. And Ideen's ideal cellar temperatures are only like sherries and that sort of malarkey. So if you're um, sparkling wine and non-vintage champagne, that's about seven. Um, everyday Chardonnay, not to be confused with other Chardonnay, that's at nine. So never will you be stuck again. You now know which temperature to keep your, your wine at, like anybody needs to know. Maybe the butler. Maybe I should give this to the butler. And here's the thing on corks, capsules and corkscrews and then decanting. Now, I just think that is an interesting page. And I, I'm keen to put things of interest into this journal. Now, as you can see by the... Uh, as you drink the many old ways. <laughs> I feared as much, Jen. I feared that. Where's my... Um, Where's my pages, my actual journal pages? She doesn't even give them time to breathe. She gives them the kiss of life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there they are. Look, here they are. So as you can see, this page is a is a little bit wider. Hello. <laughs> and the journal. So we're going to have to, I don't know, make some flips or flaps or, you know, fold it over and put a flap. Something. Something will come to mind. So don't worry. As if you will. This here is another piece of that cardi paper. It's handmade rag, cotton rag paper, and it's just fabulous for watercolouring on. So um, I'm including that in my journal because I might want to watercolour on it. And a piece of craft paper. It's very thin, nice inclusion. That's the other bits of my journal. Then this, right. This came out of um, Cassell's Saturday Journal, was it called? Yeah. 19. 1902. Well, this says 1900, actually. Yeah, so it was there was a little sticker in the front that says it had that said it had been gifted to somebody in 1902, but by the looks of this, it was printed in 1900, and it is so fragile. It it really really is fragile. So I'm thinking what I'm probably going to have to do once I get it to the size, etc., that I want is possibly put uh, washi tape around it and sew around it because it's not going to stand it. Otherwise, it's just going to disintegrate and that would be a real shame. So uh, here we've got a powerful news story called Hush Money. It starts today if you want to get next week's and keep up. Uh, and on the back, we've got these rather fabulous... Uh, adverts cambric pocket handkerchiefs how could you leave home without it tooth block price one shilling one shilling in those days the best for cleaning teeth sold by all chemists uh, the queen's empire just they're just f fabulous never forget that colds and headaches are cured by Dr. Mackenzie's Qatar Cure Smelling Bottle. What can I say? I just think it's interesting and I'd love to include it in the journal. Look at that. That is so beautiful. I mean, I know that most of you know my mum's name was Iris. Uh, last year's no longer with us. Nearly 10 years, I can't believe it. Um... And it's, it would be really nice to include an iris in there. Now, I could cut it out and I could put it in like that. But then it's on its side and it's not right. So I'm going to come up with some plan. I'm unsure what that plan might be huh? at the moment. But it's really gorgeous. And on the back, yeah, I can... The lovely, um, this little violet and stuff. But I can live without them. I can sacrifice that. For cutting that I think uh, and then this came out of another book that I have and once again I think they will stand cutting down and forming some sort of page flip flap thing look at this it's so gorgeous I love it and look at that on the back the foxglove oh it's gone a bit grubby must have had ink on my desk oh dear never mind 
I mean, one could chop it. Is Keong on? Uh, no. Oh, hope she's all right. Uh, yeah, one could chop it. One could fussy cut it. You could do what you like with it. But I do know that it's going to be included in my journal. So that's a quick walk through. There's three like that. Obviously, the papers, the inclusions are slightly different pictures, etc. But that is that. So, during the week, I will be attempting to put this into some sort of semblance of order. I'm not sure it's going to be. It's going to be a bit of a job, but I'll be all right, I think. And then we can start making ephemera for it so the ephemera you know it it won't just all be a, a side tuck and a bottom pocket and whatever we're going to make some interesting ephemera that is, is probably standalone and if i'm going to make one i'll probably make five one for each signature and then two that i'll heap together with a load of other stuff and stick it in my etsy shop so that, dear friends, I think is about that for today. It's a short one today. <laughs> Sorry. I thought it was going to take me rather longer to colour my, ta my tag in. Um, but anyway, we've covered some ground, haven't we? Done a bit of this and a bit of that. So there's my two lilies and here's my other two lilies. So, yeah, we need the hat, Mr F. No, we definitely need the hat. We need the hat. Stand up there. So I hope, you know, even if you've got a Nicky Kids crayons, have a go at this. Have a go at colouring. Get yourself some um, confidence built up. Because basically, art, painting, colouring, whatever it is, it's all about confidence. Um, and the more you do it, I said this to Mr F before, I said, isn't it funny that the more you do it, the better you get I mean, it stands to reason, doesn't it? If you Desire practice. to learn, willingness to practice. That's it. Right, That's here's the mantra. hat. This is the topic for next week's tag. Rubbish. Oh. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it is pink. Pink. Leslie Ann Keller. So thank you, Leslie Ann. That's a, a very wide one, and I'm sure we're all we're all glad to, glad to see something that we can interpret in lots of ways. So pink, that's your tag prompt, ladies and gents. I hope you have a good time doing it. If you do do one, please could you post it in the Miss Paint a Lot Junk Journal group on Facebook? We all love to see what you've been up to. It's great, and everybody's so supportive. It's just a joy, it really is. I'll give Mr. F the hat back. Thank you. And I reckon that's it. Have you got anything that you wanted to share? No? I don't think I've been anywhere this week, have I? No, I don't think you have. I don't think you have. Right, well... Oh, yeah, he was. He bought himself a, a rule. It's actually quite a nice rule. Um, centimetres on one side, inches on the other. That's all I can say about it, really. It's quite nice. So I'll bid you adieu. Um, I hope that those of you that are celebrating Father's Day have a really lovely time. Spoil your dads. Make the most of them. Um, sadly, they won't always be here. So I shall see you live next Sunday, as normal, at uh, 4 o'clock UK time. But I'll see you through the week. Are you going up? Oh yeah, I'll see you through the week when we start to make ephemera for this, which will be exciting. I like doing that. And um, after this goes out, there will be a video of me painting that um, picture that's coming up at the end. Uh, I, I would recommend that you watch it on double speed because it's a bit, it's a bit, I don't know, like wading through trick or really. So thanks a lot, guys. Behave yourselves. And remember, be kind. And thanks for joining me. Bye. Bye, everyone. Be safe, be happy. See you soon. Take care. Bye.